All right, welcome back to another edition of Sling Bank Gaming. It's been a while, a long while, and I have to I have to give a huge shout out to Jacob because he's been like, Berto, you need to do videos. Berto, you need to do videos. And a lot of people have been asking us to do videos, and it's just been a crazy hectic the last couple of months. You know, I got kids. We got like I got like events every day of the week with these kids. I got basketball. I got gymnastics. I got Girl Scouts. You name it, I got it. It's just been crazy. But I wanted to do start uh, start this new year. Um, start, um, you know, in, we're in February now. I can't believe it's February already. Man, that's, time just flies. But I've been watching the, the, the Facebook groups have been growing. You guys have been helping each other. I love it. This is the purpose of what we why we created this is just to help other people to get into the games that we know and love. And also just to talk about the things that we love to play with. So the first thing I want to talk about is this new Wave 14 that Fantasy Flight Games just dropped on us. And I am so excited for this. This is amazing. Yes, amazing. And reason why it's amazing because finally, finally we get what I hope is, we don't know yet, we don't know 100%. I hope we get an X-Wing T-65, uh, what we're going to call a fix, and, and I'm going to say, I'm going to allude to that, but we also get another ship, um, you know, both the U-Wing and another uh, T-65 X-Wing that's, that's just, just wrapped in this beautiful Saw Gerrera from Rogue One's uh, Renegades, and then you also get from Rogue One the TIE Reaper, we had the TIE Striker. Everybody was wondering when we're going to get the TIE Reaper because you see that ship in Rogue One as well. And these new ships are amazing. So let's get right into it. Let me flip my camera over to my computer screen. Take a look at these things. Now, there's already been a couple of people that have already been doing videos related to these to these ships. And I'm loving what they're talking about. I'm loving that the, both these ships are coming out for Wave 14. Now, we, we just think that these are the two ships are for Wave 14. We don't know if they're going to release another thing. But on the left-hand side, you have Saw's Renegades. And on the right-hand side, you have the TIE Reaper. Take a look at these ships. I'm going to flip to this picture right here. Oh, yes. Look at that. Mm-mm-mm. That's what I'm talking about right there. Now, one thing right off the bat that you see here is the TIE Reaper. Well, I don't understand why the TIE Reaper looks so huge compared to the U-Wing. Right. But I think it's going to be kind of like what Kylo's um, Kylo Ren's fighter that they had there, um, the TIE Silencer. I think this TIE Reaper is going to be one of those big ships on a small base. You know, this is borderline. I think it should be a big base ship or I think they just have the dimensions of the sizes wrong. But I, I, I don't know why they went this big, but it does look big and beautiful. It's in a big box. It's not in a small box. But then on the right-hand side, you have Saw Gerreras. This is what you you see, like a crashed X-Wing in, in, the, in the Rogue One movie, and you see the black and white scheme on this. You don't see the U-Wing in the movie like this. You see the U-Wing in the movie as the, as the regular U-Wing that's already been released. But so this is kind of like a, maybe like a new thing that they're releasing here. That Saw had, you know, a U wing at his disposal, and of course he had some X wing at his disposal. But this is look at that black and white scheme of both the U wing and the X wing. I am loving this. This is amazing, and I'm already looking at the stat lines, and they look beautiful already. The Tie Reaper, right off the bat, I see that jam, that jam action. Um, I just love the concept of the Tie Reaper, and um, let's just get right into it. I'm gonna I'm gonna first do the Rebels because I'm a Rebel lover, and I'm gonna go into this whole spread here. Take a look at this spread. This is a whole bunch of goodies. Yeah, mm, that's what I'm talking about right there. So let's take let's go right at the looking at the ships here. You got the U wings, you got the X wings, the same standard U wing and X wing, but just in a different paint scheme. I love the way it looks. And I'm looking at the tokens here. Nothing new, nothing amazing. Just shield tokens, target locks, critical hit. You got the focus token. You got an evade token. But then right here, you have this token, which is the the targeting scramble token, which we'll get into in the upgrade card, which is right here. But you also got the no shot token, which is interesting, which is I think is tied to one of the cards, which we'll get into in a sec here. But then look at the spread of pilots. Look how many pilots are there. There's a ton. Now, 
if you're looking at this, okay, I see one, two, three, four, five pilot skill value one X wing, which looks like I'm gonna blow this up a little bit here. Let's let's pull this up a little bit. Oh, maybe that's too much. Ah, I can't. Oh, there we go. Um, Gavrin. Gavrin Angels, Zealous, something like that. I'm not sure exactly what it is. It's kind of blurry when you blow up the image there. But you have five of them. One, two, three, four, five. Isn't that amazing? I've never seen that before in a pack like that. You have five of these bad boys. And what I'm hoping, right, that these are pointed around 20 points or less so you can get five of these bad boys on the board. That is is what I'm talking about. That is going to be amazing. So imagine that if you can get five of these bad boys and look at it, they're PS1, but the stat line is still X-Wing-ish. Three attack, two agility, three hull, two shields. You don't know what they're gonna be outfitted with as far as upgrades, right? And you're assuming that's gonna still have the, you know, the focus and the target lock, but that's what one of the biggest things that with, X, with the original T-65 X-Wings was a lot of people went with the T-70s because it had the boost, because it had an, an additional shield, and it had the talon roll. So a lot of people, points-wise, went with the T-70s. And a lot of people were screaming for a T-65 fix. I think in this pack, you're going to see a T-65 fix. And you're, I'm going to tell you why, because look at these all these upgrade cards. When you see multiple copies of an upgrade card, usually that means that you know Fantasy Flight says, hey... You know, here's a potential that if you want to run multiple copies of this card, here's a fix that you can run with your, uh, you know, maybe your pre-existing ships. So I love when they do that. But seeing five copies of um, maybe, oh, Cavern Angels maybe? Yeah, Cavern Angels, Zealous, Zealous, something. But you see five copies. You also see two U-Wings here, right? One here, a five and a six. But I think everything else is X-Wings. So it's only two U-Wing pilots, which I see one that looks like Saw Gerrera, which is the, the pilot six. I think it's, I'm saying Saw because I only see, it looks like an S and AAW, which is unique. And I also see the five, which is unique. And it's the same stat line. Um, and it, yep, definitely does look like Saw Gerrera right here because it looks like if I flip it upside down. Again, we're speculating, but I'm almost assuming that's going to be it. So you only see two U-Wing pilots, but then you see one, two, three, four, five generic X-Wing pilots, PS1s, right? Then you see four, five, and seven PS values for X-Wings as well. And then you got all these other cards. And look at this PS7. Looks like I'm going to say Clorby Spirito, right? He's a, it looks like he's the same stat line. Looks like he's got an elite, I'm going to say Torpedo and Astromech. Coming in at 26 points, I love that point value. Right, um, but now the only thing that's been really spoiled from this is one of the upgrade cards. But if you read his uh, Colby's uh, Spirito's ability here, it says after you perform a boost or barrel roll action, you may flip your equipped. What I'm gonna see is Servinator car a fo S foil upgrade card. So this is going to be tied to one of these upgrade cards, which you actually have one, two, three of those upgrade cards, four of those upgrade cards. I'm sorry, one, two, three, and that could be the other side of that card. This could be a multiple side card, so you might get four of them, I think, here, because I think this is one which matched these two right here, and then you have another one down there. So this guy is definitely tied to the abilities, and I'm hoping, I'm hoping that actually that you can use these upgrade cards because it does say t65 i'm thinking only and it says a modification so i'm hoping you can use these with all the other t65s oh yes you're gonna get luke skywalker potentially back in the bar wedge who's always a been a big um big car that you always want a big pilot you always want to play with he has an awesome ability uh where he lowers the he lowers the agility of your um your, whoever you're shooting at um you have Porkins, you have Biggs. You know, Biggs might come back with this. You know, with one of some of these upgrades, we don't know yet because again, it's a lot of speculation on what these cards are going to be. But look at the stat lines of these things. Oh, it is so amazing. I love that they kept the same exact stat lines. I'm hoping these PS ones are like 19 or 20 points below. 
um, you know, below 20 points, so you can get five of these bad boys on the board. I would run five of these PS1s because, I mean, the three, two, you know, this is a hard-hitting stat line, right? And if these upgrades, I'm hoping these upgrades are either one point or zero points or even, heck, minus points, that would be huge. If they're minus one point or something to that effect where you can get some additional abilities, oh, that will just open up the game, open up all the X-Wing ships from the core set, the original core set, and the actual X-Wing expansion pack way back in the day. It was one of the first waves ever released, you know, plus the core set. This would bring back a lot, of, a lot of love. That would be huge. All right, so look at, let's, so, I mean, that's the PS values. You really can't tell what the other abilities are, and it's hard to see who the other pilots are. Like I do see, like you said, you see Saw Gerrera in the Ewing, but then everybody else, oh, I can't wait. I cannot wait for this release. So let's go right into the upgrade cards here. <clears throat> you see Crack Shot. All right, so Crack Shot's right there. And then you see the Pivot A-Wing. This is the, um, the Pivot A-Wing. The Pivot um, Pivot Wing Attack Mode, and this is the Ewing Standard, I believe, the standard card that you get um, originally with the Ewing expansion where it flips it back and forth. So nothing new there. Um, what we're thinking, maybe thrust or thrust something that would, I can't really tell what the text is. Oh, it's so blurry. I wish I could have those, you know, one of the technologies where you can say enhance, 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 and then all of a sudden just tells you what the text are. But looking at these cards here, we do get two cards spoiled, which I'm going to bring up real fast here. So the first one you do get spoiled was, is what looks kind of tied to this token. It's the same art. So I guess I have to make another token. Awesome. All right, is targeting scrambler. It says at the start of the planning phase, you may receive weapons disabled token to choose one ship. I'm sorry, choose a ship at range one to three. Assign it the scramble condition. Mm, and it's zero points. Not bad tech slot. Let's see what the scrambled condition is. It says when attacking a ship at range one that is equipped with the targeting scram scrambler upgrade, you cannot. Modify your attack dice. At the end of the combat phase, remove this card. I am liking this. So at the end of the combat phase, you remove this card. But this now this is interesting because targeting scrum says at the start of the planning phase, you may receive a weapons disabled token to shoot. So let's say if you're flying past the sh you know the ships right, and you have your other ships you know about to attack another you know a, you know opponent of yours, one of your opponent's ships, right? You can use this right. And it's within range one, as long as it's range one to three, yes, it's weapon, you get a weapons disabled token, but you let everybody else in your team do the work. Just think about that. You let all your other ships do the work, you put the targeting scramble. That means that opponent's ship cannot modify um, their attack dice. So when they're trying to basically, you know, roll, they can't modify whatsoever, which has been huge, especially with any modifications as far as like upgrades with, um, uh, you know, target locks, focuses, they can't do nothing. They are not to, not allowed to move. So that's awesome. Now, again, the best part about this is, yeah, after the combat phase, the token is removed, right? And if the token is removed, guess what? Then you can actually um, do, re put it back on another ship. So again, at the planning phase, it's not an action. That's the best part. And for zero points, that's huge. Now, I like this because being um, a system, sorry, not tech upgrade, system upgrade, um, this is, it's just going to open up the ball to a whole bunch of different things here. I mean, different all the different ships that have that slot, that 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 uh, upgrade for yeah. zero points, this is going to be a nasty card to deal with, right? And just think you're shutting down those aces, right? You can shut down the aces that are going to about to shoot and they use all the tokens or any of the ships that are going to use all the, Tokens and modif modifiers to um, like guidance chips or anything like that, they can't modify any of their dice. So if you strategically plan this right and get this off right, you can actually um, shut down your opponent's attack. Now, of course, it's the luck of the roll. If they're rolling you know, three dice and they roll three crits, so oh, well, it is what it is. But statistically, if they're rolling three dice, you know, it's almost about 50% that they're going to roll a hit, right? And then most of the other time, it increases if you have a focus token a little bit to about 75%. And then if you have a focus on the target lock, it's almost like 96% that they're going to roll a hit or something, at least a hit or a crit. So this, by shutting it down, it's almost a 50-50 shot, which is nice. I love that ability.
But the scrambler condition, I love that um, that you can actually the card is removed at the end of the combat phase. Now keep in mind this is the end of the combat phase. Some of the ships, like Cornhorn, who does attack at the um, at the end phase, and I believe it was also like if you have the ghost with the ghost title that could do another attack at the end phase. Um, this card is removed at the combat phase, so keep that in mind, okay? Don't forget about that. Like, oh, you know, it's lasted throughout the whole round. No, it's at the end of the combat phase. So I wouldn't be surprised that, like, this wouldn't have, you know, for the double tap that Cornhorn has, this and that, um, his second attack, yes, his first attack might be um, not modifier, but then he can get the fire control systems, and that second attack, he's allowed to use any of the modifiers that he wants. He can use the target lock. He can use the, you know, he can use a bunch of different things. So keep that in mind. Definitely keep that in mind. All right. So that's the before I get into uh, the Ty Reaper stuff here. Let me take a look at the spread here. You also see Saw Guerrera. All right. You sort of says when attacking. You may suffer one damage to change all of your focus results to a to crit results. This I like a lot. All right, for one point crew slot, it's unique. You know, Sol Guerrera. I love I love this combination here because that opens up the ball game. I think to a lot of different ships that um, that usually flips the focus token, or you, you want to add focus results. Because if you add focus results to you to you die, I mean, think about it. You can flip this. You can suffer one damage. So if you have it on a beefy ship, right, suffer one damage to make it more crit results. That is just nasty to deal with, especially you know crits. Because one crit can damage and cripple a ship. You know, depending on what the crit is, if it's a direct hit or if it's you know um, anything, any of the things that will pilot you know pilot crits or Hulk. I mean, there's a whole bunch of different things you can do with this. It's just nasty to deal with. And every time I think of Saw Gerrera, I always think of Bugali. Bugali knows no lies. I love Saw Gerrera in Rogue One. I love it. Oh. So Forrest Whitaker is just awesome. I actually saw him in person at the um, Star Wars 40th anniversary celebration. Um, I thought he was going to be like a big, huge guy. Like, you know, I'm a big guy. Like, I'm, you know, I'm 6'4". I'm a, I'm a you know, 300-pound guy. I'm a big, tall guy. And I thought when I saw Forrest Whitaker, I thought I was like, oh, yeah, he's going to be a huge guy. And he was, you know, he's, I'm like, he, he was, you know, he's, big, he's still a big guy. But but I'm like, I, when I saw him in person, I'm like, oh, I thought he was going to be like eight feet tall. I don't know why. I just, <laughs> but he wasn't. But he was an awesome guy. Um, but Forrest Whitaker, I love him when he played uh, Saw Gerrera and this and that. I love all the one-liners that he's got in there. You also see um, what looks like Flight Astromech. Uh, flight Assist, it's probably Flight Assist Astromech. Uh, which I'm thinking that is. You also see what says Magnava something. I can't really tell. It looks like it says Rebel only. Um, then there's the targeting scrambler. You see, like I said, one, two, three, and up here, um, uh, three of those um, uh, servo meter S foil upgrade cards. Now I'm thinking. See, the artwork is different on this one right here. I'm thinking you're getting four copies, and then this is the second side. So I'm assuming that. And again, it's T65 only. Up here, you look like you have what I'm thinking is going to be like a Renegade, Rena something. I'm not sure what it is. But it looks like you see the paint job of the nose of the X-Wing right there. It does say T65 X-Wing only. It says you may up something modification. You really can't read that much what it is. But you get three copies of those, which is nice. I'm really digging. Really, really digging this up, this, this expansion pack. Because I'm hoping... That these cards do make the T65 a little bit more interesting. And I'm hoping, like I said before, that you actually get them for either zero points or minus points. Because that will just open up the game for the, the T65s there. So looking at the spread here, you can see that you have... Which, so the interesting thing is here, you have two U-wing pilots up here. Right? Two U-wings. But you have... A six over here, right? Pilot plate, which you know for the U wings, they're double sided, but you have another U wing pilot plate. So either they're showing the same pilot plate, you know, just front and back, but you don't know who this pilot is over here. But the interesting thing is, you only get two U wing pods. You got a five and a six. So are they missing two additional pilots, or are they just showing the front and back? So that was just something interesting that I saw. You also see here, you got the four five. And seven, right of um, of the uniques that you have for the X-wing pilots, but the one, the five PS values, right? 
you don't see. You don't have them, which is interesting. And the U-Wing dials look exactly like U-Wing and X-Wing dials. So, And it, here's the interesting thing here. Nowhere um, it says here, like CO says X-Wing, but on the T-70 it will say T-70 X-Wing. Here it says T-65. T I'm guaranteed they're probably going to FAQ this, that, that you can't um, put these upgrades on T-70s. All right, it says T-65, but the original X-Wing was never called T-65 X-Wing. It was just called the X-Wing. So when they came out with the movie Force Awakens and they introduced a new T-70 style of the X-Wing, definitely gonna, um, they're probably going to fact that with saying that only original, uh, the original X-Wing is, is the T-65. So this can't, can't, cannot be put on a, um, on a, a T-70 X-Wing. So, so just keep that in mind. But I'm loving what I'm seeing here in the spread. The paint jobs look amazing. I'm, you know, I, I wish that during the Rogue One movie you actually saw some of this action here with this X-wing, like a crashing or something, or shooting something down. But I'm actually very excited for this because potentially you have two cards that can maybe help out the the T-65, and then you have this awesome Saw Gerrera. I like Saw Gerrera a lot. I'm like looking at the put what I can do for the list that will give me focus results um, to change him over to a crits, put him on a beefy ship. I love it. Um, all right, so let's – that is the Soar's, Soar's Renegades. So let's look at this next. Oh, yeah. Take a look at that, the Thai Reaper. Oh, mm, 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 mm. this is what I'm talking about. The Thai Reaper – you see in Rogue One for like this one scene, actually two scenes, one scene where it's flying with two an escort of two TIE strikers, right? And then you also see it landing and dropping off um, the Death Troopers and that one scene with the final scene where uh, they're trying to flip the switch there to get the broadcast out. Whoop, there we go. You do see a, four new pilots that you have for here. You have a PS1, PS3, PS4, and a 6. The stat line, I'm liking this stat line. For Imperials, this is nice. You have a three attack, one agility, which is unique for Imperials. Usually you have a high agility for Imperials. But you have one agility, but you have six hull, two shields. That's interesting. You also have the focus evade, which is nice. And I'm, I'm actually happy they put that with the low agility. And then you have the jam token. I love it. Jam, 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 jam. Then the cool part about this is, if you see this, it has for this uh, for this pilot for this unique, which is Major uh, Vermeil. Uh, Major Vermeil has elite slot and double crew, so I'm assuming that everybody is going to have double crew. So you have three elite, you are so three unique pilots here, three, four, six, but then you also have the PS1 that looks like you can have multiple, and it says Scarif, or I'm probably Scarif Specialist or Scarif Patrol or something to that effect. Um. But Scarif, Planet Scarif is where, you know, during in Rogue One, that's where you see the Reaper. But for 26 points, that's awesome. You know that means that this guy right here in the bottom, PS1, is probably going to be around 21, maybe 22 points, maybe 20 points, right? You can get a bunch of these on the board. And they're beefy, they're tanky, and I love that you have the jam action. You can shut down you know, the, uh, the tokens on, the, on your opponent. I also love the spread of cards here that you get. So before I get actually maybe before I get to the spread of cards here, Major Vermeil's ability here, I'm gonna zoom in a little bit. Alright. Uh Major Vermeil says when attacking, if the defender does not have a focus or evade token, you may change one of your blank or focus results to a hit result. That is nasty. So if you can shut down, use the jam, shut down. Uh, and they don't have a focus or evade um, or evade token, you can actually do some nasty damage with that, putting some extra additional hits through that. I love that combination. You can't really see the abilities of the other ships. I'm not going to go if, then, what, after, may, this. But, you, I mean, you do see that they have other unique abilities. But look at all these upgrade cards. Yes. Yes. And then who do you see right there in front? You see Director Critic. Don't choke on your aspirations. During the setup, before the place forces step, assign the optimized prototype condition to a friendly Galactic Empire ship with three or fewer shields. It's five points. Oh my goodness, that is huge. 
Now, the optimized prototype, it says increase your shield value by one. That's nice. Once per round, when performing a primary weapon attack, you may spend one of the results to remove one shield from the defender. Let me read that again. Once per round, when performing a primary weapon attack, you may spend one uh, sorry, spend one die result to remove one shield from the defender. One die result. Doesn't say a focus, doesn't say a hit, doesn't say a crit, doesn't say a blank. You can remove any of those. So you can remove a blank, one die result, to remove one shield from the defender. How nasty is that? Now, I'm assuming that there's probably some more text underneath here to give it some conditions because that is pretty nasty. Now, Director Krennic, though, five points that you know that's very pricey but if you think about it if you can get what typically in a game um out you know an hour and 15 minute long tournament game if you can get at least i want to say mm, maybe i want to say at least seven six rounds of fighting all right um of con you know of actual rounds of battle if you think about it there's only like you can probably get like maybe 10 12 15 rounds of flying and you know fighting and sometimes you can only get maybe like half of that actually uh, shooting at each other right this card pays for itself right if you have a blank result you can actually just remove a shield that's awesome and you also beef up your shield value by one which is nice that is awesome and you put it on one of your friendly ships which is pretty cool but again at five points keep that in mind so it's is almost like an Emperor Palpatine in a way where you want to keep Emperor Palpatine. You know how Emperor, the original Emperor Palpatine, you always put him on the shuttle? I can see the shuttle coming back. All right. I can see um, other ships coming back for the Imperials that can just hold this ship and just run around and just be like a last resort because Director Krennic is just so nasty. Now, it does, you can only put this on one friendly Galactic Empire ship. And one of that, as soon as that ship goes down, right you lose this so you got to be careful with it so keep in mind that is this during the setup of before play setups of assign this you know condition you can only put it on one ship it's unique you can put it on one ship now if i am playing an opponent that see i see this condition and he puts this on whatever particular ship he puts it on right you know that everybody's going to be going for that ship first which could play to your advantage if that's your strategy if you know all the people are going to go for that ship, then you can circle around and set up, you know, um, a nice kill box area of your other ships taking out um, the other ship that's going after this ship that has Director Krennic on it. So keep that in mind, right? So you can use it to basically lure in people and take them out. All right, so let's. So some of the car, other upgrade cards that you hear, you do see. I'm going to pull this up. The Death Troopers card. Two crew slots, two points, not bad at all. Imperial only. An after another friendly ship at range one becomes the defender, if you are inside the attacker's firing arc at range one to three, the attacker receives one stress token. I like this. Some stress mechanics, dealing it out. I like that combination a lot. It gives them just another opportunity for two points. You put this on, you know, you can put this on this uh, on the new uh, the Tie Reaper there. And it just, again, it's a stress mechanic. But the big thing is those after another friendly ship, right? And it says another friendly ship. So you can't be your, yourself. At range one um, becomes um, the defender. Again, you can res you just, just deal out stress tokens. So using the director Krennic um, combination with this ship, I mean, you're just dealing out some nastiness. I like this combination here. I like Death Troopers a lot. So let's see what the other up card cards here. It looks like it says, I'm saying advanced air airlines. It could be something that's very similar to the TIE Striker. Um, it says treat your maneuver or something, um, but you receive a stress with white. I'm not going to really go into the, uh, the details here. Um, I think that's tactician officer, tactical officer, system something. Um, ISB or IS-8 could be another droid or something like that. Multi camo something you really can't tell what these other upgrade cards are but if you look at them majority of them are all crew cards not that interesting so i'm wondering what these cards are up here because i mean i think they're going to outfit this with double crew 
I like this because this just also expands it. One of the biggest things with Imperials is, if a lot of people don't know, is it's very heavy on the pilots and their abilities, Imperial side, and also on what they can add as crew. Like you had Emperor Palpatine, right? You have Kylo Ren. You have all these other abilities and stuff like that. Now you have direct acritic. One of the biggest things with Imperials are always having the nasty, nasty crew that's attached to these ships, and it just 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 does crazy things. I like how they limit this on to one ship that you can place in the whole entire game, um, and it's not like kind of like um, Emperor Palpatine or the original Emperor Palpatine before it got nerfed. Where it was for any ships, anytime you do it once per, per turn, this is tied to one ship. So it really makes you think on how you want to use this. But I love that, that it has this ability. Again, it's very flavorful, just um, flavored to the, or seasoned, I should say, to the Imperial way of playing. Um, token wise, you see the new Director Krennic token, which we will definitely be making those. The Jam tokens, you see Focus Evade, Shield, Stress, and the Critical Hit. TIE Reaper Dial, you're looking at the TIE Reaper Dial as a new dial. So you see that it has a hard two turn. So I'm assuming that um, that these things want to go straight and fast. Um, more likely, I would probably like to see a lot of green maneuvers on it. But with the point costs of these things, I would be surprised that if they'd have, um, it's probably have a lot more red than you think. And I'm wondering if it's going to have an, um, the, uh, the K turn or some kind of Corrigan turn or um, Talon roll or something to that effect or that where it can flip around just like the um, uh, like the striker did, but it would be definitely interesting to see here. I do really like this whole imperial setup. I can see this at least one of in imperial lists. I can see at least one of these ships, you know, holding Krennic maybe, right? Just, just but it's also beefy enough to t you know to deal out some hits and play with it. Right, I could see a major Vimeo look for 26 points for five and plus five. You have 31 points there. You put in another elite upgrade on there. I mean, and you choose, you know, season the taste on how you want to put your elite upgrade there. I think it's just gonna be an awesome combination. Think about it, right? Um, any of these other pilots, depending on what their abilities are here, I see something with um, Captain, I'm not sure what the Captain, the PS4 says jammed. So, something with the jam token that's, I mean, I think just another thing. I think really shutting down the, uh, the actions. Of um, of your opponent is going to be really more. I think this is what the whole flavor of this Tie Reaper is: is really shutting things down for your opponent. You have the jam, you know, the jam action. You have Director Krennic with the optimized prototype. You have the Death Troopers dealing out stress. So a lot of it is shutting down the actions. So I could see this ship. I can even see this ship with the Kylo Ren's Tie Silencer in this mix. I can see even with the. You know, and depending on what the point value you want to go with, you can actually have it and season it with. Um, uh, actually, you know what? Actually, just thinking about it right now as we speak here, you can run the Scarif, you know, whatever this is, the PS1 value with Direct Krennic on it, just to have Direct Krennic on it. It'd still be a viable ship to deal nastiness with, right? And on top of it, you can fit, probably if that's 20 points, 25 points, you can fit a TIE Silencer Kylo Ren with his condition cards. And uh, Director Credits Condition cards. You can probably even get either an Omega Leader. You can probably get a Soon Tier Fell. You can probably get a Quick Draw. You could probably get another Ace in there if you if you probably price it out wise, point wise, and minimize it. But you can have a nasty list. Oh my goodness, that is just insane. Imperial's getting some nice loving with this release. I like this. I like this ship a lot. All right. So what do you guys think about the new Wave 14? Let me know down in the comments below. This, uh, I'm actually kind of excited. I'm wondering if they're going to release any other ships with Wave 14. Sometimes they might sneak another one in there. Um, or we'll definitely see what some of the cards get spoiled along the way. Probably in the next couple of weeks we'll get another card spoiled. I don't think there was a release date scheduled for this, but I wouldn't be surprised if it's probably going to sometime... Uh, spring, spring, early summer that this gets released. I think the cool part about this whole layout, it's just going to be definitely giving some some rebel love, definitely giving some um, imperial love, which is nice. I think it's much needed right now. Um, uh, between especially imperial side, I think imperials need some more love and to get some more ships. And I think this ship actually here, the whole tie reaper, can definitely give some love and. To the Imperials, and especially direct Krennic. I would not be surprised if you see there a lot more direct Krennics on the board here. Again, 
if they play it right because it's only for one ship but if you play it right with one ship and you like like if you give that to tie silencer oh my goodness you just increase the tie silencer's whole value and it can just shut down and take because tie silencer can take the beef a little bit and um can help flip some of those dies oh it's just a nasty combination uh Imperial's getting some love i okay yes Imperial's do need get this get some love sometime all right but if you guys let us know in the comments below, what do you guys think? Also, check out our Facebook groups for X-Wing Miniatures. Check out the links below. We have also from a Facebook groups for other games. Those Facebook groups are growing to several thousand, couple thousand people. Um, just talking about submitting lists, getting ideas, a whole bunch of new cool stuff. Definitely take a look at it. Also, if you guys want to help support us, definitely take a look at... Um, uh, the token store and the token store links or the apparel store. We have a whole bunch of wide range of different tokens that we uh, that we sell. My wife, she actually makes them all and ships them worldwide. Um, we have a lot of different themed based tokens and also for a lot of different games, not just X-Wing. We have Destiny compatible uh, tokens. We also have L5R compatible tokens. Uh, you name it. There's a whole bunch of different games that we have. Definitely check out our Etsy store in the links below. And also our apparel store if you guys want cool swag, slink paint shirts and stuff like that. Uh, let us know again what you guys think. Give this video a like and also definitely subscribe to our channel. I will definitely be doing more videos. I've been putting a whole uh, list of things I want to start covering, especially for X-Wing. You're going to start seeing, um, I'm going to do some list reviews and do some other cool things. Um, we're going to start bringing this channel back and I really appreciate you guys that are sticking with us on all of this. I know it's been a while, but like I said, just, we had a lot of family stuff. Uh, getting away here, but um, but good family stuff, I, you know, good stuff. But anyway, I really appreciate it, guys. If you guys have any questions, definitely leave in the comments below.